Hey Flutterbys, it is Butterfly. Thank you for coming by. I really appreciate seeing that you have come. Um, definitely, if you have any insight or something to share, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. So I welcome that. Absolutely. Uh, do take some time to kind of, you know, talk to other people who have chatted down below and um, get to know each other. This is um, this is a very cozy little tribe and um, it's it's nice. It's really a nice place to be. So, um, I have shared before on my channel that, um, you know, I have an underlining condition that's called depression. It's very common. Um, also, I have from time to time anxiety. And um, so, I thought today I'd, I'd uh, come up and, and chat a little bit about how um, I manage some of those symptoms during times when I feel low. Um, I find, I find that depression is something that is, is really common as we know, but even more so now during these times of a global pandemic, it just seems that um, the research literature or even just by ex experience of people we talk to, people are having more of a low feeling. Uh, so it's even more pronounced now. And um, so I just want to kind of share, you know, something that I do uh, in those moments and perhaps, you know, uh, you might like to share what you do when your mood is a little bit low. So um, when, when my mood is low, I tend to retreat. I tend to, um, I've designed my, my life around kind of workplaces that, um, that allow for that, for, for me to kind of budget. I'm not like full time in any one particular place. So I budget my time accordingly. Um, so there's, there's a pointer for you. You have to kind of de design your life to work with what you can uh, put out, right? So if a five day work week is too much for you or seven days on and six days off or whatever the case is, you have to kind of look for work and manage um, those things according to what you can put out in a healthy way. But today I want to share um, what I do in those moments when I am on my own and I'm managing those low moods. And during those times, I don't have a lot of energy to start journaling a whole lot in a meaningful way. Um, I know if I'm journaling, Sometimes I'll go back and read what I read, what I what I wrote. But um, often journaling for me is is not is not about you know producing something that's going to be um, tremendously useful in the future. <laughs> I might I might have um, you know lots written uh, and come back to it and read it once in a few years time and kind of go oh yeah that's where I was back then that's that was what I was going through. But journaling is, doesn't really tend to be something that I can do very much when my mood is very low because it means that I have to kind of be very cognizant and um, planning and organizing thought and putting it down on paper. And I, and I put that expectation on myself to, to, to produce something that's coherent. Now, I know that some people will kind of say, you know, you can journal and just not make it make any sense. Just write just for the sake of writing and then burn the paper afterwards. That definitely works uh, for some people. What I tend to do is uh, these these cards uh, are my go-to for those low moods. Uh, they're my favorite ones, and it is the Soul Cards, the Soul Cards uh, by Deborah Kauf Chapin. And I have both decks. There's this one. Of course, it comes in a larger sort of fiddly box and uh, the other one. So I have soul cards too as well. These are cards that she painted uh, using the touch of her fingers. And there's just something really, really special about the imagery in these cards. Um, and there's definitely quite a few flip throughs online that you can check. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea, you can see how soothing and how meditative these, these images are. Pardon me, uh, got a, a ghetto manicure, you know, this is, uh, this is 
putting on nail polish and then doing the dishes and everything else. So yeah, it's my ghetto manicure. It's, it's my speed. But anyways, these, these images are very soothing. And so when I do feel low, I can relate to these cards. These images definitely have meaning for me uh, and during those times. They don't really have a whole lot of intricate symbolism that I, f I know, I don't really feel like there's a huge expectation to, to overanalyze and pull meanings. And I don't use these for client readings at all. I use these are, these are, these are sacred just for myself. Um, because this is for my own personal use and for my own personal healing. And that's, that's the skill. That's the technique that I use when I'm on my own. Um, I will surround myself by, um, with so soothing music and, and just with my hands, go through the cards and let them speak to me, get my thoughts and feelings. deck if I don't want to. I can stop on any one card if I want to. And sometimes I will fall on a card that really speaks to me in the moment. Uh, for instance, this one might speak to you. Uh, it might speak desperation. It might speak fear. It might speak hope, um, anguish, loneliness, solitude, isolation. I mean, all of those things can be in there. This can be looking into a hole, an abyss. It can be looking into a funnel of light. It can be actually an ascending sort of um, mountain rather than a cave. Person kind of looking into there or looking upward uh, to the mountain. So these are very interpretive as well. This tends to be a very Mother Earth sort of mothering image. But these, just the, the fact of having a deck of cards like this um, can be very soothing at a time when you want to have something to do that's not really, really um, taxing on your mind during those low moods. And the reason why I like going to cards is because sometimes when you go and speak to a, a friend or a person or a colleague or a professional, um, and I use professional as, you know, sometimes they're just not always available. I mean, your next appointment might be weeks away um, or whatever the case. So let's just say that you're speaking to a friend. Sometimes friends are very good at supporting. And sometimes the person who you choose to speak to um, doesn't have the listening skills that, that you would need. Uh, sometimes they want to fix things. And that I find is the, the biggest obstacle when I get into those moods. Not only does it take effort, you know, you don't want to bother anybody, you know, um, like I get it, you know, for, sometimes friends are very open to, yeah, go ahead, bother me anytime you want. I'm here for you. But sometimes the moods are low and frequent enough that you don't want to call yet another time. Uh, that's when I go to cards. You know, those, that's a really good reason to go to cards. Um, put on the soothing music or the exciting, you know, whatever pulsating music or whatever kind of music you want, whatever suits your mood, whatever's going to float your boat. Uh, for me, it's a hot cup of tea. Obviously there's a no brainer for me. Um, during those, those kind of moods, um, I will prefer not to have something like orange Pico because that's stimulating. There's a theophylline in, in black tea, which is very stimulating. It's a xanthine derivative. Um, so I will try in those, in those moments to have more of an herbal tea that is uh, not a stimulant. So jasmine would be an herbal tea, but that's, I think there's like digitalis or something in there. It's very stimulating. Um, it's, it may cause your heart to race if you take too much or too concentrated. So something that is like lemon, and ginger or honey and water if you don't like tea or mint, um, chamomile, there's plenty, there's plenty of different uh, soothing blends. So tea would be, you know, my go-to. 
though hot water and lemon is definitely something that's good. So surround yourself with things and just be good to yourself. Be very kind to yourself and communicate with what I'm suggesting today with cards because um, the images will, will take you to a place where you need to be. When you find an image that speaks to you and that really kind of tells you what your mood is like, you say, oh, today this is the one. This is the one that I feel like. Today this is the one that I feel like. Or you might select a number of them. Um, you, you might want to come back to those cards at a later date. Maybe then you'll want to journal on them. Or just maybe never. But when you're feeling those feelings of isolation and hopelessness, um, grief, loss, uh, and you need something, something that is interactive, but where the expectation is very kind of low, the output is low, uh, I find this is a really soothing way to go. I find that as soon as I involve somebody else, yeah, it, if you choose the right person, um, the sharing of the mood can be very helpful if, you, if the person has good listening skills and who, who knows how to listen without fixing, who, lo who knows how to listen and support without kind of dramatizing. So, but it also has to be somebody who uh, is going to keep your information confidential outside of, you know, emergency circumstances, of course. But somebody you can trust. And not everybody has that kind of a resource to go to. So that's why I'm suggesting this is kind of a really low maintenance, very easy to achieve thing that you can do as frequently as you like. Now you may be inclined to actually create a painting. So if you're tactile and you're feeling artistic, you can take paint, touch with your, your hands or paint with different kind of fruits and berries, you know, smear that on a paper, um, use the textures, use glue, glitter, paint, whatever you like. Maybe you can make a painting of your own and that can be something that is very soothing. But for most of us, we either don't have those supplies, don't want to get those supplies, or just it's too much work to actually paint or journal or do a hobby or apply oneself or read in those moments where you're feeling low. Uh, and doing nothing doesn't seem to be very restorative. Going to sleep and trying to nap at some points can be not restorative because you're not falling asleep and when you are asleep you're still awake and you have those thoughts sort of running on. This is an activity that can be very meditative and I think that's why it works is because it can be very meditative. Meditation doesn't have to be kind of sitting down in a lotus position and saying mantras or performing in any particular way. It can be taking a walk. It can be focusing on a candle uh, or on nothing at all. But I'm definitely suggesting these decks as a go-to that I use because then when it's done, there's really no mess to clean up. Nobody else has been involved. I don't feel like I've kind of involved anyone else that's, you know, going out of my way. Definitely friends are good. But when there's a frequency uh, that you're not comfortable with, you know, let's just say, you can't, are you going to call your friend eight times a day? Perhaps you have eight friends. Perhaps you, perhaps you don't. So in those times when you need to have an additional option, that's why I'm suggesting, you know, use the manipulatives like cards. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm just going to take a little look through the booklet that comes with Soul Cards 1. And there was something, oh, the visualization. That's what I wanted to talk about. So the visualization can be just looking at one picture and visualizing and letting it take you to a place. And using that as a meditative, sort of a stimuli for, for meditation. That can be really helpful. 
So the music, hot tea, any kind of props that you think are useful. Some people go to exercise, some people go to all kinds of different things that, that help them in their low mood. Um, I'd be interested in finding out from you what you do when your mood is low and when you just don't have the energy to do some of the things that are typically suggested. Um, and I'm asking you to share, not only just because I want you to communicate with me, but also because other people can use it as a resource, as some ideas, um, as some ideas that, that work. Because I do find that there are a lot of people with low mood these days. Um, the spring is coming, and sometimes that tends to, to bring out that sort of low mood in people. We'd like to think that it's the hope that's coming, and sometimes that, that hope that's coming, when you just don't have the hope coming and you feel like you should, uh, sometimes that can really highlight that, that low mood. So um, anyways, this is a thing for you to do. Let me know what you think. And um, onward and upward. I will talk to you again soon.